what's up guys earl at sumo bully kennels uh welcome to the channel uh, been a while guys sorry had to um take a little time for myself uh had a lot of things going with life and uh got super busy however um doesn't stop us from getting back to uh what we got to get into right and uh and that's the thing guys about this whole uh, dog thing is that it's a full-time thing you know, um, managing the channel and social medias and stuff, it is a lot of work. Uh, however, the dogs are the dogs. So, um, if you're just joining us today, we're going to go over um, this special breeding that we're doing. Um, this is a repeat breeding from last year. Um, if you're just joining us, welcome to the channel. Hello. Uh, please, um, if you don't mind giving us a like and a subscribe, we appreciate that. It helps us stay focused and motivated to provide you guys quality content. So in today's episode, we will be covering um, the special, uh, this is a repeat breeding from last year, guys. Um, last year did not take, um, very disappointingly for a lot of you guys who reached out to me as well, but especially for us because we put so much into this breeding. And so we are excited to announce that this breeding did take. So um, this time around, we um, kind of kept it hush-hush, you know, we, we did our work and... Um, didn't want to get build the excitement for a lot of people who really wanted in with this breeding until we knew 100 percent for sure it was confirmed so without further ado let's get into the episode um here we go so this is what we're calling our double down result breeding um for those of you who don't know let's introduce the characters of the story um our girl is this girl on the right uh fortuna for those of you who don't know, um, we imported her from Brazil. Let's go take a look at her on our page. All right here, here she is. Um, this is an, an adult import from Brazil. And um, during that time, we were really looking for something different, right? Um, a dog that brings, a female that brings substance that uh, you know, is outside of the box of what we're used to here. And that's not a knock on any of the dogs we have in the U.S. We have some amazing, amazing um, American woolly females here. Um, again, for me, <coughs> pardon me, I have a little cold. Um, because we are a composite breed, you're going to see certain influences from Mastiff or Bulldog or even terrier right which are the main components of our breed and so for me um, the Brazilian dogs have a heavier influence of bulldog right and with that bulldog you're gonna get massive heads a lot of bone right um, just uh, some pretty extreme um, hyper features right attributes <coughs> And uh, one is not better than the other. I'm saying for preference of what I like, that's what I'm referencing here. So we brought this girl here. We did a video on her and why we brought her. So if you have not seen this video, um, you know, this was our seventh dog purchase for Tuna Brazil. Uh, I love her head. I love her, um, her, her cheeks, uh, masseters, they call it. Um, so if you could kind of see on this cover right here, nice um and she's still pretty young here she actually looks a lot better now um, the forehead uh the muscle expression on the forehead is like a klingon i mean it's crazy uh, definitely um very uh, lean muscular type dog um, while carrying that broad chest shoulder um, assembly up in the front so i really love this girl and um you know, when I was doing my research on this girl, looking at her, um, kind of just daydreaming until our negotiations started to uh, move forward. So I'd like to give a special shout out to uh, Samba Kennels, Aurea, my friend, uh, for helping me negotiate and bring this dog here and transport her here to the U.S. Um, you have been a godsend for me. Thank you so much. So uh, for us, this girl has heavy bone, widespread, tight nice cat feet up front uh just what i'm looking for a compact right not too not too tall 
not too big. Uh, what, what I'm looking for in a female is what she possesses. And, um, you know, here we go. So if we look at her pedigree real quick, uh, you're going to see, um, and then this will all tie into her M bark. You're going to see uh, uh, Mandibula. He's a very nice dog from uh, Lucas Pit Kettle. So doing research, um, if you guys are interested in getting a dog, uh, regardless of the dog, um, adult or um, puppy, my first thing is the pedigree of, you know, especially with a puppy because you don't, you don't know what you're getting. You don't, you know, you're, you're buying a snapshot of what the dog is going to look like when it's fully mature. So um, I like super sex uh, woodland kennels right here, Wood, woods bull kennels. A very ripped dog, very athletic, right? I like that. I, you know, I love the XL class, but I, you know, and the muscle, but I also love functionality on a dog, right? Um, if the dog is humongous and is, you know, super bully, but overheating, walking up down the stairs, it's, you know, it's not really my kind of thing. You know, we have, to me, the creative process of getting into this industry, into breeding, is um, a good balance of um, a dog that... Uh, displays the attributes of the breed standard while maintaining as much functionality um, as possible and we're talking about uh, you know tolerant to weather right cold or heat uh, athleticism you know having a medium drive um, you want I like a dog with a medium drive that will play that you know for toys or anything um, I don't want a dog with zero drive certainly uh, so yeah, looking at these dogs here, you got uh, Huracan Kadesh right there. It's an F1. Um, here it is, and um, looking at these structures of these dogs, it's, it's pretty cool how you see the breeding process of the, you know how it funnels up, you know a few generations up. You know you how you're looking at one, two, you know three generations right here and here's my girl right here right look at that and that's a girl looking like that right it, if you didn't know any better you would think she's a male dog um, funny thing is I left the uh, I left the da -da -da vets clinic and um, the girl the lady complimented me on her it was a really sweet compliment but she thought she was a boy so anyhow, I thought I'd share that would be kind of funny. Um, so yeah, looking at the pedigrees, you know, I like to look at pedigrees and, and really follow the development of the dog at least three generations. And to see like um, Mandibula was a, a nice looking athletic dog, right? So for me, <clears throat> the most bearing is going to show on the mom and the dad, right? Because that's direct influence into what makes your dog. Uh, and looking at Super Sex and Mandibula, they are two very ripped, very athletic, bully-type dogs, you know. Um, and after that, of course, is the grandparents that makes a difference because you're still going to get um, some of those attributes that can throw back to the grandparents and then the great-grandparents, which is the third generation. So with that said, that's for Tuna. And, um, you know, based on what we have here in the U.S., uh, in terms of, um, oh, sorry about that. In terms of the phenotypes we have here, that's why I picked her, right? Because she has a heavier um, bulldog influence. So you can see here on Embark, um, her koi is a 17, which is good. Um, so if I'm looking for her to throw her look, uh, I'm looking for a male with a koi of under 17 so that she could dominate the litter, right? And, um, in the genetic pairing anyway it's a female throws two x's and the male throws x y the y is um, determines the sex of the dog and so the female is contributing um, uh, basically two copies of genetic coding because she carries a double x and the male only carries one x if that makes sense so anyhow that's why females to me are high value and very important because they play a big role in my program um, and, um, you know, if you consider looking at it from that standpoint, 
they may play, you know, you might understand the importance of a female for your program as well. <coughs> so, a high koi or low koi is not wrong or right. It's just what you got to work with. So, without further ado, here, look at her summary real quick. Um, she's clear of her genetic disorders. Uh, here, this is a big one for me. 34% bulldog, right? Uh, and I like those traits. Again, it's you're going to get that wide frame up front, that thick skull forehead. Uh, here you go. 28% Terry right here, pity. American. I don't know what the, that part is. 23.9% American Bully. But then you got the, the, the Staffordshire Terrier, which is, I mean, right there kissing cousins with a Terrier anyway. But if you looked at her, she looks, you know, if you're seeing the Bulldog influence with the Terrier traits is what I'm trying to say right so that is for tuna that's one half of this breeding right here um, wanted to go over that with you and of course the other half of that breeding is mr. Klaus right so there's mr. Klaus in this picture um, here let's watch this real quick Klaus's standout features include his mighty sh shoulder and rear muscles owing to his this catch from the beginning. Meet the extreme XL American Bullies superstar, Klaus Canil Rocha from Samba Kennels. Imported from Brazil, this two year old Titan boasts a striking 22 inch height, 132 pounds weight, and a 27.5 inch head. Klaus's standout features include his mighty shoulder and rear muscles, owing to his gaudy line Dax pedigree in the fifth and seventh generations. Yet despite his daunting build, Klaus has a loving demeanor and an irresistible love for balls, hanging tires, and traction work. ABKC President Dave Wilson and international judges admire him as a breed epitome. He's more than a bully, he's a celebrity. Klaus has revolutionized the XL world, setting the import trend of many bullies from Brazil. His influence extends globally, thanks to his record-breaking stud locks in 2023, and his premium semen availability in Europe, the UK, and soon Asia and Australia. Meet the extreme. Okay, so need I say more? Um, you know what's really cool about Klaus, more more so than the dog itself is Araya. She's super cool, guys. You know, if you guys don't know her, haven't contacted with her, um, consider reaching out to her. She's very down to earth, very nice person. Um, been always super nice to me and helpful. And um, so anyhow, there he is, Mr. Klaus. Um, my wife actually found this dog and we thought he was in brazil and um you know we were willing to go down there and take a look at him I, i've never been to brazil but um i was like cool we get to go to brazil and see an amazing dog um fortunately for us uh it turns out that he's here in the u.s so which is really nice and um i wanted to see him in person and um really get to appreciate right videos and pictures are one thing but it's different to see um, the dog in person, to say. So um, I'm probably 185 pounds and 5'8". Um, let me show you something. I think this, guys, will give you a good perspective. So if I just go to my home page, and uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. This is our Insta, guys. If you don't know, so Wobbly Kennels. Check us out on Insta. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find a picture I want to give you guys size perspective, I guess is what I'm trying to get at. Here you go. So here. That's me, that's my wife, that's Aria of Samba Kennels, my friend. And there's Klaus. Look at the head on that dude. Uh, I, you know, I'm not the biggest guy, but I'm also not a small guy, right? <laughs> And I do have a big head. And look at his head. His head is like one and a half of mine. It's pretty funny. But he's a sweetheart. Um, it was a privilege to, to go down to uh, Texas and meet him in person and uh, spend a few hours and play with him, understand his temperament, um, see his movement, his structure. You know, um, <clears throat> that's really was what I wanted to see because it's easy like to capture a dog's best moments. You know when you're stacking the dog or posing a dog 
or you know if you edit a video so you show the best parts of a dog right it's another thing to go see a dog in person and really see you know appreciate the dog for what it is um, no dog is perfect number one and um, as a breeder it's your creative vision um, there's pieces all over the table right it's like having a bag of Legos without something to follow you're gonna make whatever you want out of it you're gonna use whatever pieces that are gonna fit your vision is what I'm saying so this is a, a good perspective of what Klaus you know um, size wise looks like in person so boom let's go back up here there's for, there's tuna this was before she came here and um, this is kind of tricky because this was an international dog transport we got her here from Brazil um, so excited uh, a lot of anxiety a lot of worries of course never had a dog come from Brazil to the US as you know as me the person getting receiving the dog you know it's certainly an investment um, not cheap to transport a dog not cheap to acquire a, a quality female like this um, you, whether you're in the US or any other country when you, when you purchase an adult female um, it's certainly an investment um, the nice thing is that um, the difference of getting a puppy in, a, in an adult is that a puppy you're seeing a snapshot of what the dog's going to be um, and you're not guaranteed that the dog will turn out exactly the way you want it to an adult uh, dog what you see is what you get um, the dog depending on the age of the dog if it's under three years old can possibly grow a little bit more fill in a little bit more on the body and have a more mature look but for the most part uh, the structure is set already and um, you don't have to worry about things going south for you so there you go um, that is for tuna and um, this is our breeding with Mr. Klaus. Uh, the pups are due in August. So um, last year we acquired her. And we bred her. And um, between the travel from Brazil to the U.S. And then her quarantine stay here. Um, we bred her last year. And unfortunately she didn't take. And uh, that was a heartbreaker for me. Because I was so excited for this breeding. Uh, I really am a big fan of the Brazilian dogs and the U.S. dogs as well. But, you know, from my vision, um, I want to uh, use that blood and incorporate it in. And so, you know, that one was a heartbreaker last year. She did not take. Um, ugh, that hurt. That really hurt. But, you know, th th like they say, you know, in this industry, you know, if you're getting into dog breeding, <coughs> things happen, you know. We did a side by side, everything. Um, she was bred four or five times um, within that window of fertility, um, and it could have been a lot of things. It could have been just the you know the change of environment, right? These kind of stresses affect dogs. You know, you're going from Brazil, you're traveling, you know, to get here to the U.S. and then from settling into the U.S., different environment, different different home, different people, different dogs. Um, a lot of things and so you know we just really took the time to you know for you guys getting an adult allow the dog to acclimate to its new home and um, yeah she really bonded here with us and this time around uh, she if she took she confirmed and so part of the gut-wrenching part of the story last time was that I had so many of you guys reaching out to me you know I stopped the list at 60 because it didn't even make sense anymore um, and then uh, the breeding didn't take so this time you know I put a few feelers out there you know like um, updates but I really didn't push it hard because I was just kind of I don't know what the right correct word is um, maybe disheartened right disheartened is a good word from the last time when it missed and so I, you know, I didn't want to get so excited about it again, right? And then get let down. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So this time, that's not the case. Yay. <laughs> it's been a wait. It's been uh, an investment of time and money 
to get these dogs lined up to get the girl here you know to you know make sure everything is good with klaus and you know anything can happen you know dogs die guys um and sometimes at a time we we don't expect them to and that's why i was worried i'm like man i gotta make sure you know i was really excited about klaus and um having to wait for a breeding you know things can happen accidents can happen guys um life happens murphy's law right so with that said um we are confirmed and let me show you that picture here pull that up let's see where did it go here it is uh, let me see pull this up over here no i don't want to move all right let's try it like this there you go confirmed um took her to the vet friday and uh <coughs> i wanted to wait first i was gonna do the ultrasound and i'm like you know what i'll just wait a little bit longer and um and i'll do it i'll do the x-ray instead so that we can clearly see things right because ultrasound uh typically um the vets like to see it uh 30 days after and uh the x-ray that i want to see the dog at least 40 days after ovulation right so we waited a little bit and i mean all the signs were looking good to be honest um so here this was uh i posted this um as you could see her um her nipples got really big i mean she's even way bigger now in terms of her nipples her body's huge right now um so yeah, I wanted to wait because I just didn't want to be disappointed again, I guess. And that, and that's part of it, guys. You know, it's uh, you get into this and you think, oh, like, yeah, you get a girl, she goes into heat, and it's, yeah, you just go ahead and do an AI and she gets pregnant. Um, if only it were that easy and if only it, you know, everything went like clockwork, A, B, and C. So um, I did some, uh, what did I do? I did some... Uh, progesterone test videos so i got the wanfo i'm doing whole blood right now because i like it a lot better um, and i will be doing videos for the reverse progesterone this week but um yeah i was testing this girl every day um and i had two girls in heat actually so i'll give an update on that as well this week uh but i really wanted to touch base on the on this breeding because this was a special one for me this is something i've been waiting for now for over a year and it finally happened and for you guys who have been breeding and been involved in this industry you know sometimes you plan a breeding man it doesn't go the way you want sometimes it doesn't take sometimes it doesn't take twice um, i've heard horror stories of, of breeding is not taken three times and um you know it's painful um, very painful for your vision right because you're trying to further your 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 vision and you, you're going to need generations to build that dog you want, right? It just doesn't happen over one breeding. And so there's there's a time value to things and an expense, a, a holding cost um, to keep everything in line. And um, when things don't go your way, sometimes, you know, you, oh, man, you you sit down for a minute and you kind of lose, you know, that, that fire to go. And um, that's one thing we did stay focused on. You know, it's been a very challenging year, um, to be honest here, guys. And I'll share a little bit of my personal stuff. But um, it's been a tough year for us, you know, as a family, as a camp, as a, as a kennel. My wife had knee surgery. It's, it, you know, I've been, I've been husband, father, nurse, cook, uh, <laughs> janitor, laundry man, name it. Name it, right? Um, and that's the thing you gotta you gotta take care of people you love right um, and then uh this year we also lost um our boy kaiju uh yeah that that was my son's favorite dog we lost him in may uh, we're in august now and i i'm gonna do a tribute video for him because he deserves it um he we lost him four days before he turned one year um, and if you guys know man he's one of the dogs that you'll see the most in our um, in our insta right there that's 11 months old he right here he's probably 127 128 pounds roughly um, 
yeah, that one was, was the one that really that really hurt. Um, we lost him. He was looking amazing, you know. He turned out the way exactly what we thought he would be, and uh, we lost him this year. I mean, between emergency vet and everything else, I mean, it's not just the money loss. I mean, you're you're going to these vets X-rays, X-rays, emergency vets. I mean, you're you're thirty-five, four thousand dollars, you know, a year of feeding this guy, taking care of him, everything, and. Um, the, the cost of um, attachment is the most expensive one. So if you've never lost a very promising dog for your program or for yourself as a pet, man, I'm going to tell you guys, it hurts. And so that's, I kind of wanted, you know, to take some time for myself. You know, it's important to be committed to your visions and things, but you also sometimes got to take a time out. You got to sit down, and that's why we've been, not as active on um, YouTube or social or uh, uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. I just needed that time to reset and refocus, guys. Mm -hmm. You know, because you know it, it was it was a painful loss for us. You know that we've um, had some difficulties this year dealing with stuff, but uh, it's not the end of the world. Uh, we're still here. We're still grinding away. Um, the visions, the dreams of us as a camp um, of our passion for this breed for this hobby for this business for this program or whatever you want to call it guys it's still there and um, sometimes you got to sit down and basically regroup right and refocus and that's what I needed to do for myself I had to take care of my wife first and then during that time you know I had two girls in heat managing progesterone tests AIs TCIs and then losing a dog like that, who we raised from the time he was eight weeks old. Whoo, let me tell you. So, um, knock on wood, everything is going well. Um, still blessed and thankful, guys. And still here. And a lot of you guys who did reach out to me on the side, um, in terms of my wife and for Kaiju, thank you so much. I appreciate um, the prayers and concerns. So thank you for that. That was very heartfelt. Um, and to help motivate me to stay, you know, dialed in. Um, but, yeah, aside from that, all is good. Um, this one here, this was a special one for us, you know. Beautiful breeding here. Um, you know, the key points for this breeding, I mean, really is the bone, the structure, and the muscle, right? Klaus is, to me, a, a wow factor dog. Uh, you know. I don't care which way you talk around it. If you see this dog in person, there's no way you're not, you know, or you see him move or chase down a ball, there's no way you're not going to stop him and be like, wow, look at, what is that? Like, that's, you know, he is, he's that dog for me, um, for my liking, um, for his, his, I love his face, I love his movement, I like his drive, uh, I love his temperament too, he's a good, he's a good boy, you know? Really good boy. Uh, Tuna, same thing to me. For a female, she's got that wow factor, you know. And for me, it's like all parts of the dog are very important, right? What they call breed type, right? But for me, what distinguishes a bully, our breed, is the face, the head, right? That big old noggin, you know, lunchbox, meathead looking dog that, you know, with the shoulders, I mean, I'll take a dog with strong attributes and breed type that's not 100% super clean over the dog that's super clean that lacks breed type, to be honest. And that's just me. That's not a knock on, you know, to each their own, man. I'm telling you what it is for me. You can have a perfectly clean dog that lacks that bully breed type that does not look like a bully to me. It looks like a, a pity or, I don't know, a, a Connie Corso. I've seen some out there that look like Connie Corsos. Um, yeah, number one for me is breed type. Sorry, not sorry. If it doesn't look like a bully, well, to me it's not. You know, So for me, I like those extreme, those hyper type bullies. Um, and I'm part of our, you know, 
kind of part part of our vision and part of our duty as a breeder is to make a better dog, right? That's what everyone says. And for me, that's it. And uh, these two are, you know, they exhibit a lot of breed type, both of them. Uh, let's see here if I got, you know what, let me see if I, you saw a video of, uh, Klausi, let me see if I have a video of, of Tuna. There she is right there. Maybe this one. This is me picking a row from Texas in December. Let's see her there. Let me see. I think um I think Araya posted a video somewhere. I'm trying to find that one. But anyhow, yeah, it's uh here. This one you're gonna see her movement here. That's what I mean, that muscle, right? She was fairly new in the U.S. here, um, kind of, kind of a little thin from travel. Um, but yeah, there you go. There's the movement, that drive to, to work. Functionality, right? Look at the muscles on her forehead. I love that. Nah, there it is. See, I knew Ray had posted something. But anyhow, um, so yeah, guys. Um, Okay, so back to, sorry, I'm rambling. Back to what you guys care about. Uh, in terms of this breeding, uh, if you're interested in this, d DM me on Insta. Fastest way to get a hold of me, we do have um, uh, people interested in this breeding already, um, even from the prior, um, when we try to attempt this breeding and it didn't um, fully go through. Um, right now, uh, we are confirmed. Um, they see seven. Uh, what they can't see is seven. However, the doctor um, said there could be more, but what they can clearly identify as seven is what they told me when we went um, on Friday. And the due date, um, well, <laughs> because I waited so long, I wanted to make sure, you know, just being that guy to definitely verify things. Uh, the due date might be uh, next week. Um, I'm looking at, they gave me three, uh, they reserved three dates for me, uh, which is August 1st, 2nd, and 3rd for a C-section. However, um, those dates can fluctuate because I will be testing her starting tomorrow. Uh, starting tomorrow, I'm doing a reverse progesterone test on my machine. Once she's under a three, she is safe to cut and I won't have issues with premature puppies. And that's something I'll cover in another video as well. And also, um, I have the rectal thermometer. Uh, typically, when a dog hits 98, you know, you're about a day out from having puppies. So, and then obviously, um, if, if you see um, like a white secretion from a vaginal discharge, white secretion, um, there are signs you're going to be looking for is what I'm trying to say. So for me, um, testing her daily progesterone is one. Uh, I'm taking her rectal temperature twice a day, once in the morning, once at night, because she can fluctuate through the day. And um, yeah, and looking for signs, right? Panting, uh, nesting, things like that, uh, because I don't want to have a litter <laughs> at 3 a.m. in the morning at night, and I don't want to pay for an emergency C-section, guys. Um, however, with this breed, um, and especially for tuna she can give natural birth she has given natural birth so you know um, just because she can doesn't mean I want to take that chance for me for myself because she is a very important girl to me um, if some complications occur you can lose puppies and you can lose the dog or lose both the puppies and the dog it's very scary right and I just lost the dog guys I my heart can't take it I'm sorry <laughs> Seriously. So uh, without uh, what else? Oh, without further ado, I think that's it. Um, so yeah, we are confirmed, guys. Klaus and Fortuna uh, should be here next week. If not, you know, a few days before or a few days after. You know, again, all uh, depending on the uh, on the progesterone and the temperature test. But we are happy and excited to announce that this breeding finally happened. And I'm super excited to see 
these pups, you know, come to life. It's just part of my vision. I want to see them a year, two years after to see what they really produce. Um, you know, all the things that I lined up between the, the koi, the pedigrees, um, studying their pedigrees on both sides, understanding what I'm dealing with, what I'm trying to create. Um, it's a step closer towards our vision as a, as a kennel, as a camp. So, um, guys, for everyone who has tapped in and watches our videos, thank you very much. We appreciate it for all you guys who have subscribed and comment. Thank you. You know, um, apologies again. I'd like to take a moment to apologize to everyone for um, being a little bit on hiatus. You know, I, I just told you guys why. So, you know, apologies, but I'm back and we're back at it. Um, any questions, you can DM me. You know, I'm here to help just like everyone else. And thank you for all the people that have helped me. All right. All right, guys. Erla Sumo Bully Kennels. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. I'll catch you this week, in fact.